the unlikely track of Cyclone Gulab. It's very rare to see a forecast for a tropical cyclone impact into Pakistan. September 2021, an extraordinary month. September is coming out with an average temperature very close to what we'd expect as an average August temperature. And building climate expertise in Africa. We've been able to improve access to weather and climate information of over 3.3 million households. It's Friday, the 1st of October, and you're listening to Weathersnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir, and this is Weathersnap, an insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. Earlier this week, thousands of people across three states of East India were evacuated as heavy rain and damaging winds marked the arrival of cyclonic storm Gulab. The tropical storm initially lost intensity as it tracked westwards over land, but it was then refuelled by the warm waters of the Arabian Sea. To find out the latest on Gulab, I spoke to Deputy Chief Meteorologist Paul Hutchins. The Arabian Sea tropical cyclone season actually is split into two parts, really. The first part is before the Indian summer monsoon, and the second part is after the monsoon starts to move south. And so we're into the second part of the monsoon season. They don't get too many cyclones really through the course of the year, not like you get in the Atlantic or the Northwest Pacific. So it's not unheard of, but it is very rare to see a forecast for a tropical cyclone impact into Pakistan. Tell me about what's fueling this storm. Is it sea surface temperature? Why is it tracking into this part of the Indian subcontinent? So this system is an ex-cyclonic storm. It was named Gula by the Indian Met Department about a week ago, actually, in the the Bay of Bengal across the other side of India. And during the last week, it's tracked westwards across India, produced quite a lot of rainfall, which has led to some severe impacts, but it weakened as well as it moved across the land. So as we go through the coming days, as it moves out into the Arabian Sea, The Arabian Sea at the moment is actually three or four Celsius uh, warmer than what it usually is at this time of year. And also it's moving into a much uh, more favourable environment as well in the atmosphere for for developing. And that's the reason why we expect it to redevelop into a cyclonic storm as we go through the next few days. So we've seen imagery of flooding in Calcutta. And as you said, the storm eased a little bit as it tracked across India. What are our greatest concerns for this far northeastern part of India as well as Pakistan? The main concern is the amount of rainfall. I mean, at this time of year in southern Pakistan, usually a month's rainfall is about 10 millimetres, which is not really a lot at all. But actually, we could be seeing as high as 250 millimetres of rain falling in about 36 hours across some parts of southern Pakistan. And that could include the large cities like Karachi as well. So I think flash flooding is certainly a significant risk And also, potentially, we could see winds as high as uh, 65 miles per hour in gusts. And again, I mean, you don't really see strong winds in that part of Pakistan usually. So potentially, we could see some damage as well from the strong winds. Deputy Chief Meteorologist Paul Hutchins. Although it was a wet and windy end to September here in the UK, Last month will probably be remembered for very different conditions, as Dr Mark McCarthy explains. Around the the 7th, 8th of September, we had some very warm weather. Actually, in terms of the warm spells, it was second only to the heat wave in July. We got over 30 degrees in several places and a few places in Wales, which is the first time that Wales has exceeded 30 degrees in September since 1961. It wasn't just the beginning of the month where we saw temperatures above average. Many parts of the country saw temperatures well above average for this time of year. So normally, this is what we'd call one of the transition months. We would expect the temperatures to start dropping off as we head into the autumn. Uh, But this year, it sort of maintained higher temperatures through the month. So actually, September is coming out with Uh, an average temperature, which is very close to what we'd expect as an average August temperature. Where does it stand in terms of the warmest September on record? The warmest September on record was in 2006, 
uh, reaching 15.2 degrees as an average. This year has come in very close to that, slightly below. So this September has been the second warmest September on record for the UK overall. Mark McCarthy, thank you very much. This week, the United Nations presented Africa Climate Week and as the event draws to a close, the Met Office too is nearing the end of a long-running climate project based in Africa. Weather and Climate Information Services for Africa, or WISA, is a UK-funded programme which aims to develop weather and climate services in a number of African countries. Programme Manager is Kate Ferguson. WISER is funded by UK Aid through the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office of the UK Government. It's been running since 2015 and it's just closing its second phase of delivery. The main aim is to improve the quality, accessibility and use of weather and climate information to improve people's decision-making ability. So we've been working with a range of different organisations from the National Met Services to non-governmental organisations. One of the largest projects was Highway, delivered by the World Meteorological Office, who then worked with National Met Services in Kenya, Rwanda and Tanzania. The Highway project focused on these countries as they all border Lake Victoria, which prior to the project didn't have an effective early warning system to provide information about possible weather-related hazards on the lake. Lake Victoria is a huge source of trade, such as fishing and a key regional transport route. So there were many lives lost on the lake, up to 5,000 a year, due to boats going out on the waters without information about potential weather risks. As a result of this work, weather-related deaths on the lake have reduced by around 30%. We've also worked with organisations like BBC Media Action, who delivered the WeatherWise project in Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. Through WeatherWise, over 100 journalists and scientists were trained in communicating weather and climate information to fishermen and pastoralists, resulting in improved weekly forecasts that now reach over 620,000 people. Through WISER, we've been able to improve access to weather and climate information of over 3.3 million households, and through that, improve the resilience to weather and climate shocks of over 8 million people. Kate Ferguson. And you can find out more information on WISER at the Met Office website, metoffice.gov.uk. Now with the details of the weather here in the UK for the next few days, Alex Deacon. The first weekend of October promises some wet, windy, in places even wild weather. A deep area of low pressure is developing and heading our way. Now, for many, actually, the weekend will start dry, but quite quickly, rain will spread into the southwest, South Wales, and that will uh, become pretty widespread by the afternoon. Northern Ireland may not see too much. Here we could have a largely dry and bright day on Saturday, and northeast Scotland may well stay dry for much of the day too. But elsewhere, turning wet and very windy. The strongest winds along the south coast, where gusts of 50, 55, maybe in exposed places, 65 miles an hour could cause some disruption. There are Met Office yellow warnings in place. The wet and windy weather will then travel its way northwards into northeast Scotland, where we're concerned about the rain, and then the winds pick up in the far northeast on Saturday night and into Sunday. Sunday looks very windy across the Northern Isles especially. Elsewhere, Sunday looks a brighter day for the majority. There'll be more sunshine, But there will still be blustery showers, particularly in the west, where they'll be heavy and thundery. But for a good part of the Midlands, East Anglia and the southeast, Sunday looks a lot drier than Saturday. And it should be a lot brighter as well with some sunshine. But overall, plenty going on. There are Met Office warnings in place. Make sure you keep up to date with those. Uh, Another spell of wet and windy weather is likely early next week, particularly on Monday night and into Tuesday. So keep up to date because, as I said, some potentially disruptive weather to come over the next few days. Thanks, Alex. Just before we go, here's Martin Bowles with last week's highs and lows. Here are the weather extremes for the week beginning Monday the 20th of September and ending on Sunday the 26th of September. The highest temperature of the week was 26.3 Celsius at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire on Wednesday the 22nd. All official UK temperatures stayed above zero last week, just 
The lowest recorded temperature was 0.2 Celsius at Braemar in Aberdeenshire in the early hours of Monday morning. The largest daily rainfall total was 26.2 mm at Tindrum in Perthshire on Sunday. The maximum recorded sunshine hours was 11.4 hours at Armondsbury near Bristol on Monday. We won't be seeing this much daily sunshine for the next few months, as last week we passed the autumn equinox on September the 22nd and the equilux on the 25th. Since that date, all days have been shorter than nights. Thanks, Martin. That's it for Weather Snap. I'm Claire Nazir. Editor is Adrian Holloway. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office.